Many Metro Detroiters connect to the world through Delta. We'll talk with the airline's new CEO about security, the industry, and what it all means for passengers in one of Delta's biggest hub cities. And Wayne County Executive Warren Evans on jails, soccer, and the way we fund Michigan's municipalities. Today is Sunday, May 29, 2016, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. I hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. No holiday around here. We've got a busy morning ahead. First up, as we head into the summer travel season, perhaps you're afraid to get anywhere close to an airport given the lines at the security checkpoints. Sure enough, this week the TSA fired its head of security. But as frustrating as the whole no liquids, take off your shoes, put your laptop in a bin routine has become, it is still so critical because air travel remains a vital cog in the world's economic engine. And you have to believe short circuiting that engine remains at the top of any terrorist wish list. This morning, a conversation with the new CEO of Delta Airlines, Ed Bastian, about security, about Delta's plans for its Detroit hub, and whether those baggage fees ever get to go away. Then I'm going to sit down with Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. He's got plenty of worries, but no doubt chief among them is the fact that he's blowing a million dollars a month right now on the Wayne County Jail mess. How does the plan for a new soccer stadium fit in? We're going to talk about that and we'll set the stage for this year's Mackinac Island Policy Conference with Sandy Barua. It's a busy morning today on Flashpoint. We're going to start out this morning coming to you from the Weston Hotel at Detroit Metro Airport. A rare chance to sit down with the CEO of Delta Airlines. Very good to welcome Ed Bastian to Flashpoint. Ed, thank you very much for the time this Great morning. Great to be with you. Good to have you here. I, I want to talk a lot about uh, Delta's role in, in what's happening in Detroit and the future. But I want to start with where I, I think the rubber meets the road for a lot of people right now, and that's their frustration with air travel vis-a-vis uh, -vis TSA. Right. We watched the security chief of TSA be relieved this this past week, but we're just getting into the travel, summer travel season. Um, as somebody who, I, I guess in a, in a sense, as the airline, you're on the other side of the TSA line waiting for the people to come to you. It's nothing you control, and yet it's, we, we it's very intertwined with what you're trying to do. We don't control it, but we look at it as part of our customer's travel experience. So we're, we're very engaged with TSA in trying to, trying to make the lines move as, as quickly as possible. The challenge we have today is that our air travel is is up. You know, we're, we're going to be up this summer five to ten percent in terms of people traveling, yeah. largely driven because airfares are down. Airfares are down five percent versus a year ago, so more volumes up. TSA staffing levels are about ten percent below last year's, and so it's as a, a result mix. of that, it's, it, the mix isn't working. What we've done is we've we've provided resources to TSA. We've, uh, there's a lot of jobs that the agents themselves, the TSA agents, don't need to have a badge for to do, such as checking IDs at the front of the line, moving bins around, you know, you know, telling people to dis, you know, disengage, taking their, their cell phones out of the There's a lot of work that Delta, so we, we've provided, uh, I know in Atlanta, about 75 resources to pull in those roles to free up more officers for more uh, lanes to be opened. We're investigating and investing in new uh, new processes in Atlanta to try to keep lines moving. We've got industrial engineers. There's a lot of work we're doing with TSA to, to help the flow. I, and yet when I'm going through security, I can't help but feel that this is all r a ridiculous exercise. I watch an 80-year-old woman getting a pat down. I, I, I see uh, these tests that have been run where uh, the TSA agents miss 90% of maybe the bomb making materials that somebody's getting right. through security. And I'm also, I'm, I'm never really convinced that there are that many people uh, trying to create mayhem, a relative handful in the world, no doubt about it. But that's, it all seems like a very strange exercise in that sense. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, we do have pre-check and other vehicles through yeah. which people can accelerate their path through. And we encourage all of our customers to get pre-check clearance. And, and that does speed the process thing, up. Yes. But you know, TSA's first commitment is to security and safety. And uh, line management is not on the top of their list. And we're trying to bring some line management, industrial engineering techniques to keep lines going without compromising safety and security. Well, let's talk about then let's move into to what, where, where we are right now with Delta and its role in, uh, in what's happening in Detroit. You just this past week, you launched new service into Munich. Yeah. Now, uh, to the uninitiated, maybe that sounds like, oh, well, that's a nice little flight into this Bavarian city. I've 
connected into Munich last year for the first time through mm -hmm. Toronto, and I had no idea it was that kind of a connecting point in Europe. I mean, it's a, it's a big step. It's a big market. It's a big market. Second biggest market outside of Frankfurt. Yeah. A lot of travel, a lot of business travel. Yeah. You know, with, with specifically the autos have a lot of uh, business in, uh, in Germany that they want to get to, and so we're pleased to launch that flight. So Detroit has become this uh, interesting place to be a gateway, especially into Asia. Yeah. Uh, it seems nonsensical almost that a city uh, that's in the eastern time zone and where Detroit is situated. Uh, but uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Detroit's position in with Delta and, and where you see the future going for the city. Well, we look at the uh, U.S., you know, kind of east of the Mississippi, west of the Mississippi, and we do have on the eastern half, you know, Detroit, a, a wonderful airport, best airport in North America. It's, that's uh, true, pretty terrific. That, 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 is, that is designed for connecting traffic flows. And it's more efficient for us to drive as much flow over Detroit to Asia directly than almost any other launch point in the eastern half of the United States. And that's what we're doing. So we bring all of our traffic up through Detroit and take Detroit to five destinations in Asia direct. Um, a few years back when uh fuel prices went sky high and the ticket prices went way up. Uh, everybody sort of protested. And I was all ready to light into you over, wow, now that gas is a lot cheaper, why haven't prices gone down? And then I read a study that shows, as you mentioned, that uh, air, pri air ticket prices are down. Right. And that adjusted for inflation, it actually costs about half to fly as it did 30 years ago. It does. You kind of took my argument right out of my, it takes my argument right out of my hands. It, it, it is more reasonable than I think most of us, I, I guess, give it credit for. It is. Uh, deregulation back in the 80s worked. Deregulation was designed to bring airfares down, to bring flying to, to a larger group of people. And today, we'll, you know, this summer, we will have more people traveling on Delta than any time in our history. Right. And fares are down. They're, they're about 10% lower on an inflation-adjusted basis than just 10 years ago. And every year, you continue to see price points come, come lower. But it must then uh, kind of grate on you that I guess that for most people, when they talk about air travel, they're talking, many of them talk about a very miserable experience. Uh, never mind TSA, which is, of course, pretty unpleasant. Right. But then they, you know, uh, shrinking leg room. A third of the people on any flight are in the dreaded middle seat, so they're already miserable. Uh, the bins that are overfilled because everybody's carrying on now rather than paying baggage fees. Uh, why does it have to be such a, a lousy experience for so many people? Well, we think our, uh, we think, first of all, it's not a lousy experience. We think it's a, a very good experience at Delta. Where would the uh, world's stand-up comedians be yeah. without being able to complain about air travel? Yeah, I think if you were to look at Delta's promoter scores on its customers, we've been, we've been at all-time highs. So we're providing the most reliable product we've ever provided in our history. We are in the midst of a streak where we've gone over two weeks without a single cancellation worldwide. Uh, which it's is extraordinary which given is, the number of flights, isn't is, it? Yeah, you know, 3,000 flights a day is pretty remarkable. And as you bring price points down, you know, more people want to travel. So our load factors are at all-time highs, too. 20 years ago, which is a reference point for some people, you know, our planes were half full. You know, today, our planes are full. And the reason our planes are full is because prices are a lot lower and people want to travel. So it's a, it's a balance. We, we, uh, we maintain different products. We have, you know, for people that want to buy a little more leg room, there's an ability to buy up uh, the product. And whether it doesn't have to be first class, it could be our premium economy, which we're fairly modest buy up. Um, but we think, we think air travel today provides value as never seen before. It's a real double edge for people, though, because, of course, it means the, those full planes uh, are indicative of the success, but that's part of what makes it difficult for people It's one of, one of the reasons why prices are as low as they yeah. are, and it keeps prices low. I, I, I'm really curious as to where we're headed in the future of air travel. We talk a lot right now, especially in Detroit, about the future of mobility. Right. We're talking about self-driving cars, cars uh, powered by electricity, cars powered by hydrogen. Uh, this connected system. I never hear people talk about changing the way that we travel through the air. When I was a kid, we had the SST, and I assumed that by now everything would be Concorde like supersonic travel. Fact of the matter is, it still takes about seven hours to get from Detroit to London. Where's the future? of air travel going? Well, a couple things on that. First of all, a lot of it's is embedded in the air traffic control systems, which we all agree need to be modernized and updated. And so the routings of aircraft today, as air travel has increased, have slowed down. 
and, and because of spacing requirements. Uh, we're working with the government, we're working with the next gen uh, ATC officials to try to find ways to and continue to improve with a more efficient air traffic control system. Supersonic travel, you know, the, there, there's, a, there's a spot for that, but the price points to make supersonic travel work, uh, most people aren't, aren't interested in. And so the Concord size of, never made money, right? The, this, it never did, and there's a reason why it was shut down. Uh, it came around price points, and it came around the, the investment as a result that airlines could not afford to make in that product. Uh, you mentioned to me earlier that you didn't take your first flight until you were 25 years old. You graduated from college without having ever been on a plane. That's true. And today you're running one of the world's largest airlines. Yeah, go figure. You kind of <laughs> you kind of blown away at where you are. I am. I am. I'm humbled. I'm humbled by it. It's a it's a great company. We have the best people. 80,000 people worldwide. They do a great job here in Detroit. Uh, I really do believe this is the best airport in North America, uh, right here in Detroit. And there's a tremendous value that we bring to the local economy in terms of in terms of 125 directs a day in terms of destination served. It's great. Terribly important part of the future of Detroit. Ed, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. for. Well, thanks for having time. me. It's good seeing you, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Hope so. Thanks very much, Ed. <laughs> we come back. We'll be joined by Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.